Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today's video has just come to me as I started replying to a bunch of comments from the videos that um, went live over the weekend and obviously some trailing comments from other videos and some Instagram DMs and I thought, you know, I, I wasn't ready for this. Um, this whole concept of being an influencer, very micro as it may be, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it. And I thought it would be a good video idea to talk about how it feels to become an influencer by accident. <laughs> so while we're talking about influencers, um, I think it's important for me to differentiate the fact that I I don't consider myself an influencer as a profession or as a job title. I'm talking about influencing as a verb whereby I share what I like and other people like it and maybe buy it. Um, and yes, I do make an income from YouTube, but I kind of call that you know, light entertainment, <laughs> not influencing. So I believe that the term that would apply to someone like me with a small following that I have, so I'm not even a micro-influencer according to this um, definition, which is someone with between 10 and 50,000 followers. Yeah, I'm a teeny tiny influencer, but as I said, more a verb than a job. Um, if you have watched any of my videos besides this one, particularly the one I did where I said my YouTube channel was failing, um, you'll know that I started YouTube as just a hobby, a way of connecting with people to talk about designer handbags because there's nobody in my life that loves these things quite as much as I do. There is now though after starting my YouTube channel almost two years ago and becoming much more active on my Dale's Addiction Instagram account. I can't tell you how many people I have to talk to about bags and luxury things and new collections. And it's honestly a big, big part of my life now compared to being something that I used to hide away and not really talk about. And I, I just get, got my old Remarkable out because you guys know that I love this thing. And I, I just wrote down a list of things that I, I guess I didn't expect about this. And there's equal numbers, oddly, of positive and negative things that I've discovered throughout this whole accidental influencer situation that I've stumbled upon. And I wanted to share those with you. Maybe just so you know what it's like to be on the other side of the camera. Maybe if you're a YouTuber too, they're things that you've come across and experienced or if you're yet to, maybe they will come. But also as somebody who watches these videos, you know, what's it, what is going on at the other end? Um, and for me anyway, these are some of the things that I thought were just pertinent to this whole experience of being an accidental influencer. So the first thing is that I share things that I um, that I'm buying um, i.e this beautiful beautiful burgundy top that I got from witchery and I unboxed this unboxed it unbagged it revealed it in a video a little while ago I'll put a link up here but um, if I didn't say that, somebody would ask me what this top was and where I got it from. And I do get a lot of that on Instagram too. The clothes, um, it's, it's a fun thing to share. And I'm not buying designer clothes because I can't, but they're a fun thing to share, especially if they're new season, because people can jump on and grab those things, hopefully, um, and enjoy them at the same time that I am. Then you've got the makeup and skincare. Again, these are not cheap things. And so it's really nice when you guys say to me, you know, what are you using? Can you do a video on your daily makeup routine? I'm like, oh yeah, okay. And I do. And some of you will talk to me about the fact that you've gone out and tried products and got testers and whether they've worked for you or whether they haven't. 
but then there's bags right and people um, going and buying bags that I've bought because of my experience with them so I group all those things together and say um, I get so many great messages from you whether you've had a positive experience or not most of the I have to say like 99.9% .9 of the time it's positive where you've gone and tried something or bought something that I've talked about here on my channel perhaps we've had a couple of DM exchanges afterwards just to clarify a few things and you've really enjoyed it and you've sent me a message and shared that you've either ordered the bag or you tried the skincare or you bought the top or the dress from Zimmerman or Kivari. Um, and that is just like, I don't know how to explain it to, to, um, to share the joy with someone else who likes the same things that you do and who's had a similar great experience with it like it just feels great to be able to help people make choices and buy things that they love um yeah is that really warm and fuzzy and mushy i don't know but it's a really really nice part of doing this youtube thing it kind of connects me though to my first negative part of this accidental influencer which is none of these things we're talking about are cheap so even you know skincare and makeup like to spend sixty dollars on a blush for example like that's not a cheap purchase to buy a pair of jeans for a couple of hundred dollars or a dress for three hundred dollars or whatever else they're not cheap and then you take that up to a bag and the responsibility you feel, even though you're just a part of that person's research, you just, God, you hope and pray that they really love it. If it's perfume, if it's earrings, um, because if they don't, there's this real sense of responsibility, even though you never volunteered for that, it's just an opinion that you want it to work out for the person because they have spent their hard-earned cash on this stuff and... You know, their tolerance levels for perfection or imperfection might be different to yours. Um, and without putting disclaimers out all the time, like how do you kind of balance up this sense of responsibility for your own opinions and how others use those to spend their money? Does that make any sense? Anyway, that's what was going around in my head. <laughs> The second positive is that I, if you hadn't already guessed, if you've been around a little while and you've seen some of my old videos, I have developed a real sense of confidence around talking about what I love and enjoy doing and that is researching, talking about, buying and wearing designer handbags. I couldn't have had these conversations with you two years ago maybe even 18 months ago like just being here and talking to other people who have similar interests and learning from others has really helped me become more confident in not minimizing the things that i like and not feeling like i've got to defend where i spend my money not worrying about judgment from others that's their thing it doesn't say anything about me it says more about them and how they process their view of me um, I find that the more confident I am in talking about what I love and enjoy and I I can help other people find that confidence as well so that's been a really positive benefit and also linked to that by talking about it all the time I'm also more mindful in buying things that really speak to me because every time I've bought something that was hyped or classic I've sold it the pochette matisse the chanel classic flaps i mean they're just not for me and those bags are dream bags for many many people i thought that that was something that i needed to do i now know through having this youtube channel and really understanding what makes me tick that my style is a bit different and i can be more mindful in buying for me rather than what i think everyone else wants to hear so i'll link those two positives together now the next negative i guess is a little bit of luxury guilt um understanding that me literally having this youtube channel and and sharing what i have with you 
also comes with the acknowledgement that many people who watch my videos maybe don't even have one luxury handbag and will often comment and say, I don't have any luxury handbags, but I really enjoy um, taking part in the conversation or it's not the right time in my life for bags yet, but I'm enjoying, um, you know, your bags as well or um, I like these topics or um, maybe I never want a bag but I just find this a really interesting kind of genre on YouTube and then there are the people that really want bags and and will leave comments that make you feel a little bit and it's not their intention but I, but I feel a little guilty I suppose that I'm in this position that I'm in where I do have the disposable income to dabble in luxury whereas others who dearly love to can't and I guess that's the way in all areas of life but it it does um it makes me absolutely grateful for what I have but yeah there's also this little bit of guilt I guess attached with it that I never want people to feel less because of what I'm doing here and I would hope that they wouldn't purposefully watch YouTube channels that would make them feel that way if it does. The next positive, um, I'm going to couch it by saying not always positive, is the opportunity to receive free stuff. Um, and you, you know, you hear this all the time. There's a lot of companies out there who send generic emails to influencers saying we'd like to work with you, can we send you some stuff, can you review it, or what are your rates for this and that, and they never get back to you. Um, well, I find they don't get back to me. It just goes into this vortex of emails and maybe a few of them come off. But um, I guess probably my most um, successful you know, affiliates have been with Zimoni because I've received um, three bag inserts from Zimoni that I wanted um, and that worked really well for me. I received a bag insert from the bag organizer shop and I actually need to do a review on this one because um, this is quite different to the ones that you normally see. So I've got to do that. I received a free oops I received a free shirt and a pillowcase from Lily Silk. I received some collagen um hyalurized collagen supplements from the Collagen Co which I'm also going to do a review on once I've had at least 2 weeks worth. Um so they, you know, there's some perks of the job and you can also get some discount codes for the people that watch. I could also use affiliate links to make money off just the things that I'm wearing and talking about. And, you know, I've said before, I don't do that because of the additional admin. And I guess after writing down this list, and I'm looking at my list over here, I probably don't do that because I feel like then that really cements in the responsibility of recommending something. So maybe, maybe I've got some work to do in that headspace around how to use affiliate links for things because I feel like it makes sense that if I'm talking about things and I'm sharing them and I love them then if they're not my brand, like I can say, well, here's where you can get it from and, and pick up a small affiliate commission um, without f without being responsible for those purchases. You see how I'm turning this into a little negative again? Um, but yeah, like the, the, the free stuff, um, when you get things that you like and enjoy, it's great. There's a lot of junk out there and there's a hell of a lot of emails to go through and ignore, delete or politely decline because they just don't work for you. The next negative, um, and I've popped that in the middle, is bullying and trolling. Now, if you asked me a little while back, um, how do I deal with this? And I did get a request in one of the Instagram polls that I did around video ideas um, to talk about bullying and trolling online. 
I would have said to you that I I don't feel like I've experienced much of it. I mean, you get a fair bit of feedback here, right? You put yourself out there and sometimes people will be pretty brutal with their feedback. Um, so I'm going to separate feedback from the bullying and trolling for a minute. For me personally, um, I've had feedback that I smack my lips and it's annoying. I'm like, okay, cool, thanks for that. I'm going to be more conscious of trying to delete that out in my edits. Um, the first, <laughs> the first mean comment that I got, which I actually think is hilarious, was, "Is it just me, or does anyone else think she looks like Leonardo DiCaprio?" <laughs> I still love that. Um, and what was the other one? Yeah, there's been a few people who have... It comes across as they're talking down to you because they um, are a lot more invested in a brand that potentially you don't like and you've shared your opinion. And um, I've had some comments where I've felt a bit talked down to where people have said oh well you just don't like it because you know you don't have very refined taste because you like seasonal bags and whatever and I'm like well okay like fine <laughs> like I'm not telling you that you're a dag because you wear a bag that I don't like I'm just saying it's a bag I don't like and I'm not saying it says anything about you per se so why would you attack me personally so I think that kind of that's the segue into the bullying and trolling I have been um, unfortunately a part of uh, stuck in the middle I suppose of people with very strong opinions about other people and I have seen um, some trailing discussions on online platforms about people bagging out others behind their back or not really behind their backs but in a forum where they don't have the ability to um, respond like I just don't understand why these forums exist like it's just bitchiness it's horrible um, and there's been a lot of youtubers that I've really enjoyed being pulled apart on these forums and I think it's hideous I don't understand why that's the case I guess that's different to just attacking someone directly in person on their channel and on their Instagram page. But yeah, I think I think putting yourself out there does open you up for that kind of critique. And, you know, if that exists in society, then, you know, you're free game, right? You're, you're out there and everyone's got an opinion on how you speak and what you buy and what your background is and your taste and those sorts of things. So... Yeah, it's not a very nice part of social media at all. So another positive that I didn't think would be a positive is being recognised in public. Um, on the handful of times where I've been recognised, they've been really um, lovely engagements with people who are just like, oh my God, and, and they're like, um, you know, a little bit like, oh, you're actually a real person. And I'm going, oh, my God. And uh, it's like, oh, you look better in person than you do on TV or whatever. It's it's weird. And um, and there's this, there's this joint awkwardness from both me and the other party um, on the several occasions that it's happened. And, like, oh, it's just great fun. You can see my face. Like, I, I just, this is what I look like. I'm just a goofball. I'm like, oh so nice to meet you and yeah so I yeah I've quite enjoyed getting to meet people the faces on the other side of the camera that I don't get to see the last negative one that I have for you is around this um, the pressure to post and I guess um, when you have a schedule to maintain which if if there's anything you've learned about me is I don't like discipline and I don't like routine and I don't like steps and strategies and I don't enjoy any of that. And so one of the things that I personally struggle with is this concept of um, sticking to a routine and a timetable. And I don't have a filming schedule. I don't have a filming day. It's, it's if I've got things to talk about, I'll throw them out there. If I've done my hair and makeup, 
I'll think about what videos do I have if I've got some time, if my husband's out and about and I have some quiet time, then I can film some things. So yeah, I, I guess I don't I don't like the whole having to have a schedule and an upload and it's and it's an important part of having a channel showing up all the time. Um, but yeah, for me, I, I, I struggle with that routine and that discipline, but it's not really a terrible thing. And my, my final, um, the final thing I want to share about being an accidental influencer, and it's not going to be the cliche around meeting a whole bunch of friends because I think I cover that in point one, but it's, um, it's how amazingly generous people are with their time and the beautiful things that people say in the comments. It's very um, humbling to consistently read lovely comments about whether it's about an outfit that you wore on Instagram or um, people complimenting you on how you've approached a tricky issue or I don't think I've ever received as many compliments in my life as I have in the last two years and I think that that's got to have made some fundamental impact on how I see myself. Oh, I just got a little bit emotional. <sighs> Where did that come from? Yeah. <sighs> Where did that come from? I don't think I've ever been a very confident person in this. And I might appear to be on the outside. But... Yeah, I I don't know. It's a very disarming thing. It's very disarming. And I don't I don't as much as I appreciate it, I really do. I don't ever want um to feel like I've got an inflated sense of self. Like I as much as I believe the beautiful comments and compliments that you share with me I also am a very good critic of myself and so you know I feel like I can balance those things out yes I feel like I can balance those things out but it definitely it definitely does It does shake you up and I can imagine how people on a much bigger scale who are used to people commenting on their appearance, whether they like it or not and um, whether it's real or not and whether it's old or young or whatever, um, I can imagine how much work it takes on yourself to know who you truly are to survive that kind of constant um, gaze, you know, because people are watching you, right? Um, and so I guess for me, it's it's been one of the most challenging positive parts of being an accidental influencer that and a very micro influencer but um, that I've had people be really kind and part of me is anxious for the times that come where people are not so kind and how I might deal with that um, but that hasn't happened yet so uh, and I hope it never does because I like this little group of people that we've got here um, and I think yeah, I think it's just, it's wonderful. It's wonderful as it is. 
So thank you for listening to me prattle on about this accidental influencer life. I'd be interested to know if it's what you expected or if there are things that you expected that I haven't addressed here and, and maybe I haven't and I can follow this one up. And if there are any surprises, what they are, um, I'm really keen to understand from you. So I, um, yeah, I this has been a really weird video to film and especially with that little little bit of teariness there, but good tears. Um, so thank you very much for joining me all the time. Thanks for tuning in for this video. Um, I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays and even some extra ones. And so if you want to head back for my next one, please like and subscribe and I'll see you then. Bye.